Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Nadar Gavelazi and coming up in today's newscast. Seven Israelis killed and at least 12 injured in a series of deadly terror attacks carried out by Palestinian gunmen in Jerusalem over the weekend. World leaders, including from Arab countries, condemn the Palestinian terror attacks and show an outpouring of support for Israel, while the Palestinian Authority refuses to condemn the terror. And while Israel fights terror at home, there is another battle waging on another front, the battle against anti-Semitism in the United States. We open with a tragic and deadly weekend of terrorist attacks here in Israel that has so far claimed the lives of seven people and left many others injured. ILTV's Steve Leibovitz with all the details. In a string of some of the deadliest terror attacks Israel has seen in years, seven Israeli civilians were brutally murdered and over half a dozen hospitalized in serious condition over the weekend. Coinciding with International Holocaust Remembrance Day, a potent reminder that murderous Jew hatred is far from a thing of the past, the first attack of the weekend, beginning at 8.13 on Friday evening, with many in the northern Jerusalem neighborhood either at home eating Shabbat dinner or on their way home from synagogue prayers. The quiet was broken when the lone gunman drove into the neighborhood, first shooting and killing an elderly woman and then a man on a motorcycle. He drove to the Ateret Abraham Synagogue, firing at all those outside the building. A couple exited their apartment to help the wounded, and the gunman shot and killed them at point-blank range before fleeing the scene by car. It was the case of a lone gunman with deadly intent. The gunman fled toward the Arab neighborhood of Beit Hanina but was quickly trapped and confronted by police. The gunman then exited his car by foot while firing at police and was shot dead by officers. When the shooting stopped, Ahmad Amerik, an Arab from East Jerusalem, was the first to arrive on the scene. Five victims were declared dead on the blood-filled streets. Two died later at Shari Tzedek Hospital in Jerusalem. Those killed have been named as Eli Mizrahi, aged 48, and his wife Natalie, aged 45, 56-year-old Ben Eliyahu, 14-year-old Asher Natan, 68-year-old Shaul Chai, 26-year-old Ilya Sosansky, and Ukrainian caretaker Irena Korolova. All were laid to rest by today. The terrorist has been named by the Shin Bet Security Agency as Alkam Kairi, 21, a resident of East Jerusalem with no prior terror-related offenses. Meanwhile, this attack shortly followed by another shooting on Saturday in Jerusalem, as a 13-year-old Palestinian gunman opened fire on a group of passing Israelis, seriously injuring a father and son and several others. One of the wounded was an off-duty IDF officer who managed to return fire and neutralize the attacker. This was a tragic weekend in the capital, and police have since stepped up security alerts amid a tense mood anticipating that more terror may be on the way. And as Israelis mourn the victims of the deadly terror attacks, the Palestinians celebrated their deaths. ILTV's Aaron Porras reports. Massive celebrations erupting across Palestinian communities in Jerusalem, the West Bank and Gaza over the weekend in open applause for the Friday and Saturday terror attacks that left seven civilians dead, including the elderly and children, and at least six hospitalized in serious condition. Celebrations including large rallies, firework displays, and sweets being handed out in the streets. Even the Friday night synagogue shooting terrorist's mother filmed handing out candies and praising her son's murderous actions. Israel's new right-wing government, on the other hand, now vowing a strong, precise, and swift response, including expedited arrests, quicker terrorist home demolitions, and a massive bolstering of security forces. 
And to that end, Israeli security forces already sealing the home of the Jerusalem synagogue terrorist in Atul in preparations for its demolition. Likewise, Prime Minister Netanyahu announcing plans to arm more private citizens as they've been invaluable in stopping or altogether preventing attacks, including the Saturday shooting that left a father and son critically injured. Netanyahu adding that, quote, we will harm all those who harm or attempt to harm us, as well as those who assist. Meantime, as part of the new punitive and deterrent measures, Netanyahu reiterating a push to strip terrorists as well as their families and accomplices of Jerusalem or Israeli residency and citizenship rights. And National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gvir renewing his campaign efforts to advance a death penalty for convicted terrorists. <laughs> כולל אתמול בעיר דוד, שאזרחים גיבורים, מיומנים וחמושים, מצילים חיים. איננו מחפשים מסלומה, אבל אנחנו ערוכים לחד כל אפשרות. התשובה שלנו לטרור היא יד קשה, ותגובה עוצמתית, מהירה ומדויקת. And joining us now with more on the terror attacks and the Israeli government's response is former head of strategic planning at the IDF Central Command, Colonel Dr. Dani Tirza. Thank you for joining us. Hello, good afternoon. So we've just heard the countermeasures from the Israeli security cabinet. In your expert opinion, is this a strong enough response? I mean, what do you think should be done? Well, the main problem is not how we uh, react. The main problem is uh, what people think, what people feel. And the main problem now in East Jerusalem is that there is no leadership in the Palestinian side, most of the pe people feel uh, hopeless. And when you feel hopeless, you are ready to do such things like uh, suicide uh, killing and do such murders as we saw in the last week. The incitement in the Palestinian side is so high, and that's given an image to the people uh, how to be a hero. How you can be a hero in East Jerusalem? By being a terrorist, by killing Israelis. That's the wrong way to teach your people. That's the wrong way to bring the new generation to a future. Israel has to be hard, and that's the government know how to do. And uh, the operational uh, steps, I'm sure that the police and the army will know how to do it. The other th side is what we can do, what the public can do, how we can uh, balance our movements in one side to be hard uh, against any terrorist, on the other side, uh, put some future to these people, put some horizon to the people that lives in East Jerusalem. Uh, I'm sure But you know, how, how can, can Israel accomplish this? How can Israel give them hope when their government is inciting uh, and, and, you know, paying salaries to terrorist families. I mean, what can Israel do to put an end to this? We are not dealing with the Palestinian Authority about it. The Palestinian Authority is talking in two languages at the same time. When they're talking in Arabic, they're <laughs> inciting the people to uh, violence and to do things uh, that all the time they deny it when they're talking in English or they're talking in Hebrew. They are working in both sides, in both languages, in other ways. But the problem is not the Palestinian government. The Palestinian government has no power in East Jerusalem. The power is in our hands. And we, the Israeli government, have to do a lot of things in East Jerusalem. Uh, on one side, to be hard, to be tough, that people will know that if they are uh, choosing uh, to kill people, they will be killed and their family will be in a great problem. But on the other hand, we have all the time 
to show people that there is another way. And if we are not showing that there is another way, people will think hopeless.